Hello. Today I thought we would learn a little bit about wine, red wine in particular, and how to best enjoy it, serve it, store it, etc. So, stay tuned and we'll go on with that process. When red wine is stored, it should be stored at a temperature of approximately 55 degrees. This will ensure that it's not too cold, which could result in a dried out cork, which will allow air into the wine and spoil it. Or, on the other hand, if you store it too warm, you could also cook the wine, which will in turn spoil it as well. Wine should be stored lying flat, which will allow the cork to stay moist, protecting it from drying out, shrinking, crumbling, and spoiling the wine. Many people opt to store their wine in a cooler, which will keep it at the appropriate temperature and account for humidity and other such things. Some people prefer to start out with a kit, which has everything you need start your wine experience. This particular kit comes with a wine thermometer so that you can test the temperature of the wine before you serve it to your guests or enjoy it yourself. Included as well is a basic, traditional, rabbit ear wine opener. This wine opener is the most popular wine opener. It's not electronic, it's completely manual. And it works by screwing a metal screw into the cork of the wine. Gripping the sides of the bottle, pressing down on the rabbit ears, and pulling the cork out. Then you will unscrew the cork from the wine opener. It also comes with a wine stopper, so that if you don't finish the entire bottle of wine, you can insert the stopper, which will keep oxygen out of the wine and allow you to store it for another day or two until you finish it.
this kit also comes with what's called a cutter and this will cut the outside wrapper allowing you to gain access to the cork without cutting yourself or getting any metal bits into the wine This kit also includes a ring that you'll place on the outside of the wine bottle. This ring allows you to pour the wine without the wine dripping down the bottle and getting onto your hands or any surfaces. It's quite convenient. serving red wine, the approximate temperature should be between 55 and 65 degrees. For most bold red wines, a temperature of 60 degrees is ideal. Serving the wine too cold will result in a very acidic flavor and it will mute the flavorful and bold notes of the wine. Serving the red wine too warm will in turn create a very alcoholic flavor which can be unpleasant and it will also provide a very lifeless taste. Before you're ready to serve your wine or enjoy your wine yourself, you will want to aerate the wine. Red wine is really best enjoyed after it's been aerated in a decanter for a minimum of 30 minutes. Aerating the wine allows tiny air bubbles and oxygen to envelop the wine and it will allow it to release its beautiful aromas and bold and delicious flavors. be looking for is a rich brick red color with no cloudiness. Some bits of sediment is perfectly acceptable, however. Before you taste the wine, you'll want to smell its aromas. It is said that 70 to 75 percent of tasting is reliant on your sense of smell. So you'll want to try to smell the wine in its glass before
before you enjoy. You sip the wine, allow it to swirl around your taste buds, enveloping your whole mouth, and then allow it to remain on your taste buds for just a few moments. Take in the subtle notes as well as the more powerful notes of the wine. Is it bold? Is it sweet? Do you taste hints of dark cherry? Do you taste raspberry, vanilla? Really take a few moments to enjoy the different flavors the wine has to offer. Different grapes grown in different regions produce different wines. There are all types of wines, including Cabernet, Merlot, Red Zinfandel, as well as many others. Today, I've chosen this Velvet Crush Red Wine Blend. I think a blended wine is a good, safe option to start out with if you're new to wine. This particular blend of Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon and Petite Syrah offers a rich, bold flavor with a smooth background. It contains notes of dark, ripe fruit as well as smooth, rich chocolate. It's quite delicious. Before you pour the wine, you'll need to make sure you have an appropriate wine glass. For red wine, a larger glass is typically preferred because it allows more air to get into the wine, and the wine will reveal its beautiful aroma. You'll want the rim of your glass to face inward. This allows you to swirl the wine without any spillage, and it also funnels the beautiful aroma of the wine into your nose, so that when you taste it, you're also smelling it as well. You'll need to swirl your glass in small circular motions. This will aerate the wine even further and it will allow you to observe the legs that the wine has to offer. The legs are the streaks of wine that gather, and they drip down the sides of the glass. The thickness, viscosity, and color of the legs will indicate how sweet the wine is, how aged it is and will give you an idea of the different flavors that you're about to experience. After you open the wine, it's a good idea to inspect the cork. You'll want to feel the cork in your hand. If it's dry or crumbly, that could indicate that air has gotten into the wine and the wine has soured or spoiled. If the cork has a vinegar or sour smell, that could indicate the wine has spoiled as well. If a wine has been stored properly on its side, the cork should be slightly moist on the end and in good, firm condition. When the wine hits your throat as you swallow it, it should feel warm, rich, and delicious, and the aftertaste of the wine should be left on your tongue. 
tongue for a minute or two. You can also take in the aftertaste before you take another sip of wine. Try to enjoy the different notes it has to offer as well to further experience the flavors the wine has to offer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little wine tasting lesson and thank you so much for